Hello, everyone. The topic of this presentation is characteristic mode analysis of split dipole for dual-layer metal-surface lens design. I'm Li Teng from Southeastern University in China, and I'm also work with Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Germany. Uh, here is the outline. There are four parts. The first part is introduction, including motivation, challenges, approach, as well as the brief review about the similar work. The second part is the characteristic mode analysis of split dipole. Based on the analysis results, we will show you the design of dual-layer metasurface lens in the third part. And finally, the conclusions will be given. The motivation of this work is to realize a low-cost dual-layer metasurface lens for wireless communication system with clear design procedure and operating mechanism. So the challenges are how to implement such a lens on a single layer substrate with enough phase shift range and high magnitude of transmission co-efficiency. What's more, we also need high aperture efficiency of the lens and dual polarization. So our method is to propose a multi-mode unit cells based on the theory of characteristic modes. There are kinds of microwave electromagnetic lens in the literature, including the full dielectric lens, for example, the convex lens, planar convex lens, Fresnel lens, and the Lumberger lens. Another one is the full metal lens, including the paraplate lens, uh, planar concave lens, convex lens with lattice of uh, disc or spheres. Another one is the artificial EM lens, including the uh, Fresnel zoom plate lens, constraint lens, transmitter ray, and the metasurface lens. There is no very clear boundary between the transmitter ray and the metasurface lens. When the ground plane is removed, the transmitter ray works like the metasurface lens. In the recent years, the metasurface lens has become a very hot topic because of its unique EM behavior. One important work has been published in 2014. It discussed the transmission phase limit of the unit cell uh, in transmitter ray or metasurface lens design. One important conclusion is that we need at least three layers of metal plate to achieve the full phase shift range and half power transmission. For the PCB process, we need at least two substrate layers and sometimes with the prepare layers in between to combine these substrate layers. And this multi-layer design is high cost. So is there any way to break through the phase limit? After that, the wireless technique has been proposed to connect the top and the bottom surface to extend the phase shift range of the unit cell. The first work is published in 2016 based on the matter cross with the wires and the 305 degree has been realized with magnitude of transmission better than 0.82. Later, the cross patches with wires has been proposed for single and dual polarization, and the full phase shift range has been realized. Another technique is to use the high gain unit cell. For example, we can use the arc-shaped or U-shaped strips and place them in this way which is an anti-symmetrical structure. More than 400 degree phase shift range can be realized. Or we can use the split rings and place them in the similar way, which is also anti-symmetric placement. The full phase shift range can be achieved and the aperture efficiency of the lens can be really high, which is more than 60%. But the bandwidth is a little bit narrower because they use a very thin substrate. Until now, we have two techniques to realize the dual layer metasurface lens based on a single substrate layers. But how to propose such a structure and what really happened in this unit cell are still unclear. The characteristic mode analysis has been used for metasurface antenna design, including the wideband, dual-band, and higher-order mode suppression designs. These designs are all reduction problems. As you know, the CMA is also very powerful for the scattering problems. So 
In this work, we will show you how to use CMA for metasurface lens design. OK, let's start from a split dipole in the free space. The left figure shows you the model significance of forced 8 modes over 20 to 40 GHz. As you can see, only the first two modes are significant. So we just focus on model 1 and model 2, and their model current and model radiation pattern are showing on the red figures. For model 1, we have the in-phase current, and for model 2, we have the anti-phase uh, current, and their resonance frequency are very close to each other. Then we place this uh, split dipole as a unit cell for four-wave simulation with periodic boundary condition. Then we get the transmission response. As you can see, we have a very strong reflection at 30 gigahertz. And the, at this frequency, the current distribution is very similar to mode 1. It looks like only the mode 1 is excited for this normal incident wave. To verify this point, we calculate the model weighting coefficient. As you can see, only it looks like the only mode one is excited, excited. And during this model weighting coefficient uh, calculation, we assumed that the mutual coupling between the element will not change the basic modes of the element. Until now, we have seen that we have the conclusion that. For the planar split dipole, only mode 1 can be excited, and we have the very strong reflection because it resonates at this frequency. And so, how to reduce this reflection? The idea is to introduce another mode to, to cancel the reflection. Like this, we can combine mode 1 and mode 2 with a certain excitation coefficient. And then we get this combination reduction pattern. If the normal incident wave coming from Z direction, it will, we will have a little uh, reflection and uh, very strong transmission to the negative Z direction. Then we verify this idea in the similar setup uh, in the four wave simulation by rotate the by rotating the a split dipole with a, a certain angle, which is 41 degree, we get two current distribution like this at uh, 30 gigahertz, which means which looks like we have excited the mode one and mode two successfully. Transmission response is shown here. As you can see, we have very strong transmission coefficient here around uh, 30 gigahertz. And the calculated model weighting, model weighting coefficient uh, verifies our uh, assuming where the model 1 and the model 2 are both excited to cancel the reflection. By verifying, by varying the length of the uh, split dipole, we can get very, uh, la very large phase shift range, which is uh, more than uh, 345 degree. And the magnitude of transmission coefficient can be uh, higher than 0 0.83. Until now, we have verified our idea to combine the different modes to reduce the reflection for the unit cell design. The next step is to realize the slurred split dipole in planar substrate, which is planar implementation. Actually, the arms of this split dipole can be considering as the combination of a horizontal component and a vertical component, which is the equivalent slurred split dipole. Then we place these arms in the same layer. And the CMA result is shown here. We have still have the mode one, mode one in phase current and mode two anti-phase current. What's different from the uh, rotate a split dipole is that the current distribution is in the planar level, but in different height. Similarly, we can combine these two modes with a certain phase difference to get the desired reduction pattern. 
Then we place the arms in the substrate because of the, we introduce the, uh, the substrate and the uh, radiation pattern is a little bit different from the previous one. But we still have the model one and the model two with the in-phase and anti-phase current. By combining these two modes with a certain phase difference, we still have the uh, desired retention pattern to reduce the reflection. Then we place two split dipoles in the same unit cell, as you can see here, which are anti-phase placement to balance the uh, response for different angles. The same results is shown below. As you can see, we have four significant modes of the band of interest, in, which is which named the mode one to mode four. And uh, from the relation pattern, you can see for mode two and mode four, uh, we can also excite the mo these two modes by no more instant plan wave. And for mode one and mode three, with a certain phase difference we still get the desired regime pattern. By repeating the single polarized unit cell and rotating it with 90 degree, we get the dual polarized unit cell. The dream model is shown here. The CMA results showing that we have eight modes, which is significant over the band of interest. And uh, these modes are the combination of the basic modes which is anti-phase or uh, in-phase current modes of the uh, single split dipole. So it's too complex to analyze each mode. So we just show you the full wave simulation in this figure and compare it with the single polarized unit cell. As you can see, they have very similar transmission uh, response. And uh, until now, we have uh, verified the uh, modes combination for reflection con uh, reflection reduction. To extend the phase shift range of the unit cell, we try to use uh, two types of the unit cell, with and without wires. As you can see here, these are the two uh, model, and the achieved phase shift range is around 400 degree and the magnitude transmission coefficient is better than 0 0.8. Actually, most of them is better than 0 0.85. Then we studied the transmission response for oblique incident. For T waves into 30 degree, most of the magnitude transmission coefficient are still better than 0 0.8, and the phase response are almost unchanged. But for T TM waves, the ripples uh, uh, appeared until uh, 30 degree, and but they are still acceptable. And for most of the uh, transmission coefficient, they are still better than 0 0.7. Based on the proposed uh, unit cells, we can design the metal surface lens. At first, the size of the lens is determined to be 162 millimeter, and the hull antenna is selected with a typical gain around uh, 15.3 dbi at uh, 30 gigahertz and its radiation pattern can be used this formula uh, instead of the real uh, 3d radiation pattern for simplify then we can study the aperture efficiency uh, by changing the focal length for an ideal case uh, we we have the aperture efficiency equals to beam efficiency which is the captured power efficiency times uh, uh, tapered amplitude aperture efficiency. Then we get these uh, uh, curves for different efficiency by changing the focal length. Then we get the peak aperture efficiency at 135 millimeter, and the peak aperture efficiency is 81.5 percent. Then we get this FD ratio is 0 0.86. Then we fabricate this metal surface lens and measure it uh, in the microwave chamber. The red figure summarized the simulation and measurement results uh, for comparison. As you can see, they have very good agreement and the measured peak 
aperture efficiency is around 45%. Then we can calculate the lens efficiency, which is around 55.2%. And the losses are mainly caused by the transmission loss and the phase errors, as you see from the left figure. The amplitude distribution is not very smooth, and the average phase uh, errors are around plus and minus 10 degrees. The radiation patterns at 30 GHz in E and H planes are shown here. As you can see, we, we also have the very good agreement between the uh, measurement and the simulation results. This table summarizes the key performance comparison between our work and the other states of art. As you can see, we have realized the dual polarization, full phase shift range, and the relative high aperture efficiency. What's more, we have shown you the very clear design procedure and the evolution of the unit cell step by step by using characteristic model analysis. You can also use this method for the other types of metasurface lens design. And more details you can find in this paper. Here are conclusions. In this presentation, a dual polarized dual layer metasurface lens based on novel split dipole unit cells has been presented with characteristic mode analysis. The reflection at a normal incidence can be cancelled by proper excitation of the two major modes at a certain frequency. The fabricated metasurface lens has successfully demonstrated the good performance of the lens based on this novel concept. Due to the dual polarized, uh, dual polarized operation, the relative high aperture efficiency and the low cost design, the proposed metasurface lens is a very promising candidate for future millimeter wave communication systems. Okay, thank you.